Okay, I'm ready. I couldn't I couldn't remember the third plot to save my life. I was like, what did Penny and Julia do? Do you mean and Elliot and Alice go for a hike and Fen gets a haircut? Did not do enough for you <laughs> Fen- to, re- to oh, I refresh she, your memory? I guess it did not. No. <laughs> <laughs> I guess she did get a haircut. A little uh, bit. Okay. Well, then let's go ahead and start with Penny and Julia. Perfect. Um, We're going to build up to Alice and Elliot. Yeah. They're they're like a proper couple now, right? Or are well, they still flirting with yes. it? Yes. Well, no, I think they are a proper couple. Like in episode one, they were meant to be going on their first official date. But they had that conversation in this episode where Penny was like, I want to have a life with you after this. And Julia was like, yeah, me too. And he was like, I don't think you do. But like, we'll get to that later. <laughs> and I was like, that's that's like more self-aware than Penny 40 ever was. So mm-hmm. uh, I do have to say we're three episodes in and. I, I do think the season does have a slight it, it's not a lack of focus, but I don't quite have a concept of what we're doing. Um, yeah. I know that there's an apocalypse event and I guess we got to it. We got to it in this episode. OK, I'm like, it's all coming back to me. Yeah, there's going to be an apocalypse like event because of the magic surges. And yeah. they Penny and Julia were on a quest to find. I don't remember their names. It was the three sisters. Oh. Uh, the one they were looking for was Danny. Okay. And then there was Yatini Vidaki, whose name I also don't remember. Mm-hmm. Uh, I love Yatini Vidaki. I don't, I, she's just always welcome. And yeah, for sure. Basically her and her sisters went, went to break bills in the nineties and her one sister, Danny has a very, very rare and precious, um, discipline, discipline. And it's, it's like predictive. She can predict, um, Oh, fuck. What do they call them? Conditions. Mm Because like every it's something they don't spend a lot of time on in the show, but it's very specific in the book. Every time you cast, you have to take into account the different conditions of the moon and the stars and the weather and like, you know, all kinds of astrology, like where you are. It's why you have to be so smart where like Quentin was trying to go to like Yale and MIT and shit. You have to be like crazy smart to keep all that stuff in your brain. Mm -hmm. And so basically she can foresee this apocalyptic event and it's <laughs> it's the fifth one <laughs> the first yeah. one was the extinction of the dinosaurs the second mm-hmm. one was pompeii third one was atlantis particularly good the fourth one was the invention of auto tune <laughs> Yeah. (laughs) And the fifth one is going to be this. And it's basically there's going to be a magic surge under particularly favorable alignment, which, though it sounds like a good thing, it's not. It's going to be catastrophic. It's going to, like, explode all the magicians or something. Yeah. And so they're in a place now where because it's the first place my mind went. It was I was like, oh, my God, do magicians have to go public, you know, Mm. because they effectively one way to avoid it is to just warn everybody to tell everybody not to do magic and yutiti badaki in particular had a very interesting point they covered it in this episode and i think they will could i think it will come up again where she was like her and her sisters saved the world once in the 90s and Mm -hmm. their third sister died as a result of it and so julia and penny were kind of like you have to help us Mm -hmm. and yutiti badaki was like I don't. I've already saved the world. I get to be done. Yeah. And she was. Yeah. She was like, I already sacrificed enough. I absolutely don't need to help you. And it's it's interesting because it's like I I agree with both. I'm split. You know, yeah. it's like where it's like at what point does like your your the morality of not helping because you will die as well. Yeah. You, yeah, and you it's will, like you if, will help until I guess you if you've yourself. accepted that, then that's fine. Mm-hmm. But if you, you know, it's just kind of who are you to decide that you're too good to help? Kind of, it's a it's a very interesting and fraught conversation. And it, it's where this show excels the most is when yeah. it it uses. I mean, all these shows do, but it's like it uses magic as a metaphor for you know the greatest of all human questions. And I was gonna say it's also very like the good place because mm-hmm. it's like there aren't actually. Co- like like the trolley problem there's not actually a correct answer to that mm-hmm. you know if five people die or one person dies the what you imagine is correct is that the you know you you kill one person to save many but it's like 
you don't know what that person could do in the future. You don't and know who are if the like, many that you say who are the many that you saved. Maybe one of them's a murderer. You know, it's like mm-hmm. a very there's one never of enough baby Hitler. <laughs> exactly. There's never enough information mm-hmm. to like make an actual. So you are really left to to make the decision that is honestly just best for you personally. And that's sort of sometimes all you can do. Mm hmm. I think it's fascinating that they cast three black women in that mm, part. Sure. Um, because I, I feel like that's something that frequently, I mean, even with politics and stuff, it's like we the take black women are always con- saving us. We take the contributions yeah. of black women for granted. And so I I wanted to touch on that. And I think actually I did. And I think that was fine. So, yeah, I, I, and I agree with you. So I, I, en- I enjoy when this show really when it I enjoy when it says so much by saying so very little. Yeah, it was interesting. And I think we will see them again. Oh, definitely. I think she's uh, like slightly recurring this season. Mm -hmm. So from there we have. Oh, my goodness. Okay. Uh, So we have Margot and Josh and Finn and Mm -hmm. they were in the apartment, Marina's apartment. That well is now theirs. Yeah, (laughs) I was like, well, I don't know when we're going to see Marina again. I mean, we will. We got to. But the conflict that Margot was struggling with is that she actually didn't save everybody. Elliot yeah. did. And Elliot was trying to explain to her that it was, she was the king. It's her win. Take the win. I was serving yeah. under you as your person. Like I'm the advisor. Just take mm-hmm. it. Yeah. And I appreciate and understand that because it's yeah. also the kind of thing that if she took it too hard, like if she went, she went too far with it. Elliot might mm-hmm. be like, um, excuse me. You yeah. Know what hold I mean? up, baby girl. <laughs> so she was really having a hard time with it to a point where I, I almost started to say, is this uncharacteristic? But the show then explained what was happening. Mm-hmm. And so Basically, her and Josh and Finn go on a quest to Fillory to become Florian, Centurion guards. Yeah, Centurion yeah. guards, because one of the side effects of that is you can have your banishment marks removed. Mm-hmm. And so Margot would no longer be banished. And so they enter into this competition, like to the death. And I was also, I mean, I understand that Finn loves knives because it's like one of the better running jokes. But I was kind yeah. of like, why is this happening? Why is Finn jeopardizing this i don't know that she was jeopardizing it but because they were all which we only find out towards the end of the plot because they were all being affected by the werewolf thing well that's what i was about to say i was like why yeah. on earth would finn do this and risk Margot's winning and i was like oh because she is also crazed we yeah. didn't realize it and we realized it at the same time and so it felt like such a foregone conclusion i was like a fucking course yeah finn and josh got together it yeah. actually makes so much sense and i think that's one of the things Margot was struggling with is because she, it did make sense to mm-hmm. her but eh. but then she took it too far <laughs> she did and uh, on top of that there was a double full moon so yeah. the three of them were kind of well like i said crazed mm-hmm. and she was basically willing she she tried to kill finn yeah. During the battle. And then she basically she had like a knife that was it was not really a, a collapsible knife. knife, but it was like a trick knife. And so she she basically was like, that was good for you to reach for that. I can't believe you like, you know, you got my clue or whatever. And she was like, oh, no, I legitimately tried to kill you. Mm-hmm. Like, I thought I did it for real. And I just was like, whoa, <laughs> it was interesting seeing these three characters and in particular Finn. I mean, Margot mm-hmm. and Finn, but Finn, because, you know, we've said a lot how Finn is like a an underdog fan favorite of ours. Yeah. Like, you know, it, it, when all is said and done, if I were boiling it down, she'd come out in my, you know, like top five favorite characters on the show. Like, yeah. And it was really we've talked about how much she takes mm-hmm. like. And rather, I, I should phrase how much she gives. She gives and gives and gives and gives. And she understands, like, what her place is. And she accepts it. And I just think they all could not necessarily be nicer to her, but maybe value her more. Well, and I think because I've seen Brittany Curran talk about it on Twitter a little. And she basically was like, because I, I think the problem with that is that Fen doesn't know how to value herself. But it was like in this moment in last night's episode, she was like, no, no, 
I have value as a person just because you see me as like a different, like a sidekick or someone less than you, like a, or like a side character does not mean that I am not also I'm not the lead of my own story was almost what it kind of felt like. Well, I mean, they it, it didn't succeed, but it was like she was left high king. It's like she her role as Elliot's yeah. wife is an important role in a monarchy yeah. like and I think the fact that she stood up to Margot in uh-huh. the way that she did, where she was like, we thought you were dead. And I also, but we fought for you. And at your like first, and, and then died. we thought, yeah, we thought you were legit dead. And so then we like, were sort of in despair. And so we got together and it's like, nobody was doing it to hurt you. And then Margot went off on the whole, like, oh, I'm supposed to make you feel better about blah, blah, blah. And it's like, well, no, Margot, but you're supposed to understand a little. Mm-hmm. It's also been only like four days for Margot. It was years for Fen and Josh. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So it's it's very interesting. And I hope we do continue down this path with Fen. I hope that it's not over. Like, I hope that's not, yeah. well, that was her story, you know? <laughs> like, no, I, I mean, I think it will keep going, especially uh, because, I mean, at this point, who might be the better monarch at this point? It might still be Fen, mm-hmm. you know? I mean, and I just feel... She was never really, like, into Josh enough for me to fully believe that she would be that sad about him sleeping with Fen. Um, I think, but I think that's what she's grappling with okay. in real time and on top of that werewolf curse. Sure. I mean, and that's that's definitely fair. It just is, it's one of those things where it's like, I trust the show enough to continue Mm-hmm. the the storyline in a way that does make sense but right now i'm i'm having some mild issues with it mm-hmm. but i i do trust so and also it wouldn't i mean obviously i know elliot is grieving quentin and that is mm-hmm. the primary relationship but you know least we forget fen is his wife like yeah <laughs> i wish yeah he, i wish he cared a little bit more about her i guess i'm ready but. for elliot to be back in fillery now that Fen is back in Fillory, because I agree, like, that, it's always been, like, an interesting relationship, but ever since Fen got more agency, mm-hmm. Elliot has not been around in, like, a meaningful way, and so I need him to be back in a meaningful way and, like, at least acknowledge that they, like, had a marriage, you know? Mm-hmm. And a child. And, well, I think it, I still think it died, though. It, did, it wasn't, they, yeah, okay. Yeah. And Margot offered it up. Yeah, yeah. I mean, so. Fen has reasons to be. That is true. I, I feel like there is such a it, it's it's stuff that a lot of the time is played for comedy, but there it does to me feel sometimes like there is more of a reckoning coming than I think we're going to actually get. Mm-hmm. But uh, yeah, it's I don't know. I really love it. It just there's some things about it that are tickling me wrong right yeah, now. As I've said, I mean, the show's earned our faith thus far but yeah but it, it is this this was a gamble the the, the end of mm-hmm. season four was a big gamble so yeah one might even say a sarah gamble yeah <laughs> <laughs> good job so, <laughs> that brings us to yeah. elliot and alice well several things this was a roller coaster uh, and one of the parts of the roller coaster actually didn't make any sense but i thought Everyone knew. <laughs> I thought everyone knew as well. And it appears everyone didn't. Like, spe- like specifically Alice didn't know. And so what we're dealing with here is Alice, and I have been in this situation before. Uh, Alice views herself as the grieving widow. Yeah. And Elliot is the mistress at the funeral. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> and again, Alice remains a very fascinating character. And, and I still can't bring myself to say that I like her. I well, love I, her. <laughs> I don't like her is the thing. I don't like her, but I I enjoy her character. I enjoy her presence mm-hmm. on the show, and I think she's interesting. Does that make sense? Yeah, I mean, I disagree, but I understand no, but what you're what saying. I said makes, like, she, yeah, yeah, she yeah. annoys me. She gets on my yeah. nerves, but I enjoy the po- the character possibilities she brings. And mm-hmm. she, she can so quickly go to such a very bratty place. Mm-hmm. And I think it's interesting I think a lot of it is like a self-preservation thing because she knows how wrong she's been. And that's what I loved about their conversation towards the end is she was like, I know that I was wrong. I know that I betrayed everybody. And, you know, it's all this stuff. And she was like, the only way that I'm able to keep going is just by knowing that even when I was wrong, I did my best. Mm -hmm. And she was like, it wasn't 
like she wasn't doing things maliciously, but she knows that it still worked out wrong. And, but the point is that she was doing the best she could with what she knew and was capable of. And I think that's a really cool thing to recognize about yourself. Mm -hmm. Like she's, she's self-aware in a way that we don't always like know that she is. Mm hmm. And I but like yeah, that. And, and that's what I'm trying to stress. Because I keep saying I don't like her. And by that, it, I, I just mean that I don't like her, but I respect her kind of thing. And sure. it's like, and I value her contribution to the show. But yeah. it's like, I'm, I'm, I'm coming at this from Elliot's perspective. So mm -hmm. her behavior through the first part of this episode, I was kind of like, listen, bitch. Like, well, that's what I was very frustrated because I was like, I was like, when on God's green earth, is Elliot going to tell someone to shut the fuck up? He was Quentin's husband. Mm -hmm. Like, I literally was like, when is this going to happen? Because when all is said and done, Alice was on and off with Quentin for like 18 months at the most. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, Elliot and Quentin like raised a child together and Who lived until Elliot out there. Yeah. And they lived until Elliot dies. Oh my God. What if it's Sean McGuire? I wondered that. <laughs> So, but that's, that's basically my point. And then, he, because it was funny to me that Alice knew that they had been together. Well, that, that's the one plot I had, because I was like, it, it, I wish she had said something more like I suspected, because it was like, if she knew, then I feel like her behavior up until that point, it's like, why was she kind of... Well, rubbing. I think that I think that still goes to your, like, mistress at the funeral argument, because just because she knew they had, like, a kind of... In her mind, I think she thought they were having, like, an affair. Mm -hmm. But because nobody really knew what happened to them on that quest or that they even went on it. The conversation they actually had was so fascinating. Yeah. When, when he, like, finally told her and she was like, do you think I didn't know? Yeah. And she was like, "Of," and just the acknowledgement that Quentin was so complex and yeah. was so... She, she was like to love Quentin is to love all of him and stuff. Mm -hmm. And she and, and the confirmation from her is weirdly like devastating that the show that our our canon part of the show. Yeah. Is postmortem from an ex-girlfriend. You know what I mean? That she yeah. she was like he was in love with you. And I knew that. Yeah. And it was it's it's such a it, you're totally right. It's so fascinating. And it's such an interesting thing to do, especially on like American television, you know, and I, I, those are the parts that I love so much. And I don't, I, I don't have enough words in my vocabulary to explain the things that Hale Appleman's face was doing. Mm -hmm. But holy shit. And, and I do love that he didn't, because uh, I, I really kind of, when she was being such a bitch at the beginning, I wanted him to just haul off and be like, literally be like, he was my husband. We raised a child together. You fucked him for like six months what is your problem? It, he, it was obviously, he was mine, not yours. But the fact that he just was like, we loved each other for a really long time. Mm -hmm. I think that that was still maintaining Alice's dignity while explaining that Quentin was just as important to him. Mm -hmm. And I really, I, the whole scene, because I think we talked about it at the end of season four, and it was what I was most excited about was Alice and Elliot going forward because mm -hmm. I was like they are the only ones who loved Quentin the same way mm -hmm. and I was like that is that is the dynamic I am interested in and it's like it's just like the Alice and Julia stuff last week because they loved Quentin equally deeply but it from coming from different directions mm -hmm. and so now to pair Alice with someone else who loved Quentin just as deeply but from a different direction it's very good it's mm. very interesting and it's very good. And I, in my opinion, it shades Alice as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And we, I mean, we talk about because you mentioned to see it on American TV. You know, we talk a lot in our coverage because, I mean, I, I'm a gay man, technically bisexual, but <laughs> technically pansexual. If <laughs> the season Should one the of opportunity Euphor arise. season one of Euphoria <laughs> <laughs> presented, but the point being, it's like male bisexuality is is significantly more prevalent in reality than yeah. anybody knows or is willing to admit and because otherwise the patriarchy could topple and it's it's i can tell you from experience that this stuff happens it's and more than once it's not an anomaly yeah. and 
so to to see it being handled so realistically and and with dignity it's thrilling in a way that i don't see like i don't i don't see often at all yeah this i agree and it's handled with such care mm-hmm. and i think that that goes back to the writer's room because Sarah Gamble and John McNamara have made sure to have a very diverse writer's room, at, at least on the subject of sexuality. I don't know how many people of color they have, mm-hmm. but it it feels like there is somebody on the writer's staff who was like, minus the death and magic, I've been through this exact situation mm-hmm. because it feels too realistic to have been completely made up. Mm-hmm. And then there was Sean McGuire. God, I always liked him and it's it's good to like him on a good show yeah and for sure he has gone gray <laughs> uh a bit yeah yeah he was he was a bit blonder when, when last we saw him mm-hmm. and just that like when he and elliot had that one glance oh my god i just immediately was giddy and again yeah. in a way that i don't get i don't see frequently yeah and alice to her credit whether she understood or not got out of there. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> and I now believe more than ever that he is their son or, or from that. It, because... Yeah, it would have to be like a it would have to be a way down the line, because to my knowledge, that was still like 300 years ago. Well, they didn't do anything. They didn't, they even... didn't do anything. But yeah. it's like, please don't fuck your grandson. And so now because of that, because I was like, uh, I mean, I guess they both were quote unquote grieving. But yeah. I, I want to know what the Dark King is because this is a show that subverts expectations, and mm-hmm. I want to know if he is really dark and to what extent. Like, how? What does that mean? Like, yeah. is he just ruthless? Because that sometimes is necessary. Like, sure. He seemed very he. Well, he's handsome and charming, so that's pinging all of my good guy. Yeah, <laughs> of course. But I think he was. I think he's suspicious. Yeah, especially because he was the pig monster too. Yeah, but that seems to be a fluke or not a fluke. That seems to be ni- like, I don't think they're the same character. There. Yeah, okay. I think that was just for fun. I saw a tweet from, I want to say Stella or something. And she was like, bet you didn't know that he was also this. And I was like, well, then that mm. can't be a reveal. Like, OK, OK. Yeah. All right. That's fine. Maybe he just was like already on set and yeah. was like, yeah, I'll be your pig monster. <laughs> Wanted to do it. Yeah. So, OK, I guess that's that on that. Yeah, it is. We will check in next week. 